tonight. Okay. Welcome, everybody. I'd like to call to order the RTM regular monthly meeting of uh, March 27th, 2023. Could we all stand, please, for the... Oh, sorry. Roll call first. Uh, just a little exercise for you. Ed Bateson. <laughs> Marty Fury. Melissa Longo. Amy Ruggiero. Bill Gerber. Here. Karen McCormick. Here. Cindy Perham. Here. Jeff Steele. Here. Alex Durrell. Here. Jeff Galdenzi. Here. Tom Lambert. Here. Sharon Pastilli. Here. Laura Carson. Here. Michelle McCabe. Marcy Spallier. Here. Liz Esma. Here. Jennifer Barahona. Here. Josh Garskoff. Here. Joe Siebert. Here. Jay Wolk. Steve Barrett's, Here. Hannah Gale, Here. Andy Graceffa, Here. Lisa Haiti, John Kuhn, Here. Mark McDermott, Here. Jill Vergara, Here. Karen Wackerman, Here. Cameron Chinisky, Hank Ferentz, Pamela Iacono, Here. Jim Myers, Here. Christine Brown, Drew Georgiatis, Here. Margaret Horton, Here. Kelly Sinto, Here. Ken Astorita, Here. Peter Britton, Brooks Barracino, Here. Story Tallman. Here. Thank you. Thank you, Betsy. Um, now let's stand for the pledge, and we're going to have a moment of silence for uh, Assistant Fire Chief Chris Tracy, and uh, Representative Woke has asked for a moment of privilege uh, briefly after that. So I pledge allegiance. Okay, thank you. Representative Wolk. Representative Wolk from District 5, thank you, Mr. Moderator, for letting me speak. Uh, for just a quick second, I'll be short and sweet. Um, those of you who haven't never met Assistant Chief Chris Tracy, he was the kindest man one of them I've ever met. He gave him himself tirelessly and always was there for people who needed him. Um, I can't tell you how upset I am that he's not with us. Um, Chris gave me this bracelet that I've been wearing uh, the day after the tragedy at Newtown. He said, I have something for you. He brings me over to his car and he gives me this bracelet. Um, that's what kind of a guy he was. He just he was just a wonderful man, right, Cindy? Yeah. So I just want to, I'll, I'll end it on this. Um, keep Gina and Michael in your prayers. There's a GoFundMe for them if you need them, if you, if you want to uh, donate. Um, and I, the whole fire department um, is, is, is in mourning with us. So thank you. Thank you, Representative Volk. Okay, item number two tonight is to appoint Representative Edward Bateson to serve on the Special Legislative Management Committee, filling the vacancy created by the resignation of Jess Steele from the committee. Can I have a motion to approve? Representative Iacona, seconded by Representative Siebert. Any questions or comments? Everybody cool? All right. I'm not in charge of attendance, but Betsy, you get that? Yeah. All right. <laughs> Let's take a vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries unanimously. Okay. Item number three is to consider and act upon the minutes of the regular meeting held on February 27, 2023. Can I have a motion to approve? Representative Perham, seconded by Representative Carson. Anybody have any comments, questions, changes to the meeting minutes from February 27th? 
Represented by Akona. Um, thank you, Mr. Moderator, Pamela Icono, District 8. I just had a comment, actually, on minutes. Um, I wasn't able to be at the February meeting, but I understand that something that was submitted um, and discussed uh, and asked to be admitted as part of the record um, was subsequently motioned to remove. Um, and um, I just wanted to let the body know that you've now set a precedent on that and the other evening, Representative Gerber asked to do the same thing, and that now will not be admitted, admitted because we've now said, unless you read it, it's not going in. So if somebody who voted in the affirmative wants to go back and change their mind and allow that to happen, because in my experience on the RTM, we've always allowed people to stand up and ask to submit something for the record, and then we've put it in the record. I can't think of a time where we disallowed that. So I'll leave that to anybody here who may be interested in making a motion to reconsider and allowing that so that you don't give up that right, but that certainly lies with the body. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Thank you, Representative Ancona. Representative Parham, sorry, Representative Spillier. Representative Spoyer, District 4. Um, in, in response to Representative Iacono's um, message, I think the discrepancy or the difference between the two things that occurred was that the first selectman did not submit the paperwork at the meeting. She had um, submitted her state of the town and it did not include the addendum and it was not submitted at that meeting to the secretary. So that is where the difference lies. Representative Iacona. Um, through you, Mr. Moderator, thank you, Representative Spolier, but I think you are mistaken. Um, through you to the town clerk, did you receive the addendum with the attachment? I received that prior to the meeting at the desk here. It's with my packet. So I, I think there might have been an honest mistake there. Back in January, when the meeting was actually held, not the meeting wasn't last month. The meeting minutes we voted on were from the month of January. That's what you're referencing, right? So, yeah. so I I think there may have been an honest mistake there, but again, this is simply up to the body whether or not you want to set the precedent of not allowing this moving forward, because that's in essence what you did. Okay, thank you. Mr. Moderator. Represent Pastilli. Um, Sharon Pastilli, District 3. Yeah, just to add to uh, Representative Spoyer's comments, I actually had a copy of what was handed out at the January meeting with the State of the Town. And um, that addendum that the first select woman asked to have included was not in the handout and nor was it um, in the record uh, presented to the town clerk during the meeting. Um, and I think the difference is that Representative Gerber did actually um, hand over that documentation to the clerk during the meeting. So that's the difference. I don't believe that they're the same. Thanks. Representative Iacono. Uh, again, Pamela Iacono, I think there's a misunderstanding. You don't understand. We give our items to the clerk. That's the official record. record. So it went to the clerk, which is exactly where it was supposed to go. So again, I just think that there's been a misunderstanding about the policies and procedures. So it would just take a simple motion of reconsideration to withdraw that so that it goes back in the record since it was properly filed with the clerk and that would end all of this. Representative Gerber. Be 
Bill Gerber, District 2. I, I will gladly withdraw my request to include my analysis, you know, with um, the Penfield um, minutes. I, I did include it because I actually was talking about it, and I talked about what was on that piece of paper for a while. <laughs> so um, I think it's it's very different. I think I do think it's a pretty bad precedent to say that you can hand something, I could hand a stack of papers to the town clerk before a meeting and not talk about it and say, include it in the minutes, please, and then not talk about it and have it included in the minutes. That, to me, seems not just a bad precedent, but, but strange. But I, if it'll make it easier, I'll, I'll gladly withdraw my request to have my uh, financial analysis that I did talk about during the meeting and talked about submitting it during the meeting. I'll have that uh, removed. Representative Zesma. Thank you, Mr. Moderator, Liz Esma, District 4. So I don't think there's a uh, you know, lack of understanding here. Let's just you know, review the tape. I mean, Betsy wasn't here, Ann was here. We were asked for the physical evidence that this addendum, and addendum usually does mean quite literally something that's added afterwards. Um, she did not have what Betsy is sitting here with. So we were voting on the circumstances that night. We weren't setting a precedent. It wasn't here. There was no evidence that it had been submitted or that it had been in entered into the record. Um, so I'm just, you know, I think the misunderstanding is really not on our part. It's just trying to remember what happened that night. And I think the vote went exactly the way it should. Had that been produced in a way that could have been uh, verified, then of course the vote would have been different. And, and actually all I think but two Republicans voted in favor of my motion until there was some, you know, outside communication. So um, I believe that the way we voted was correct and proper and thank you Representative Gerber for offering to withdraw your, your materials from the last meeting. Thank you, Representative Zesman. Any other further comments, questions? <laughs> Representative Pastilli, you have another comment? Uh, that's okay, Mr. Moderator is covered by Representative Zesma. Thanks. <laughs> Okay, so motion is on the table to vote on the minutes of the February 27th me meeting. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Mr. Myers? So that motion carries, right? Okay, uh, items number four and five are on the consent calendar. We just have to do one thing on item number five is to amend the end date of the contract to reflect 12-31-2027. Can I have a motion to approve that amendment? Representative Garskoff, seconded by Representative Janiski. Any comments there? We're all good? It's just a, was an error in the typing. Okay, so two items on the consent calendar are the contract for DPW for the United Public Service Employees Union and the Denali uh, lease. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. Unanimously. Okay, item number six. To here, consider and act upon the following resolution as recommended by the Board of Finance. Representative Iacono. So we're going to combine them, and we want to combine them as well. So the motion by Representative Iacono is to combine and waive the readings of items number six and seven 
associated with the uh, construction and construction appropriation of the uh, um, East uh, East Trunk Wetlands Crossing project. Do I have a second, Representative Zesma? Any discussion on these? We're not discussing. We're combining first, and I'm waving the reading. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. St uh, opposed? Aye. Abstentions? Okay, motion carries. Uh, I'll open that up now to the body for questions on my item six and seven. Representative Gale? Thank you, Hannah Gale, District 6. I apologize for abstaining on this and, and keeping it off the consent calendar, but I just had one question and it was kind of answered in caucus, but I just wanted to bring it up to the body. Um, uh, at the committee meetings, someone mentioned that they were concerned that ground or that, that the construction project wasn't, ha wasn't underway at this new um, development site, uh, I guess it's called crossings at Fairfield, and they were worried that we were, that it was delayed because we hadn't approved the sewer project. And I um, just, uh, drove by it and, and looked at it and I became concerned that what if there's a possibility that because of changes in the economy that this project doesn't go through. We've been waiting for many years for something to come through on this site and you know it looked like this was gonna happen but really you know maybe maybe it doesn't. I just wanted to make sure that there wasn't you know something in this you know 5.5 million dollar bond that we were doing assuming that this was going to go through and what would happen if it didn't go through? Like, were we, were we spending money based on a, a contingency that might not occur? And so I've sort of been reassured that we would be spending this money no matter what, and it's really independent of whether or not, you know, if, if something, you know, really fell through and this didn't go through, we would still need to spend this same amount of money. But I just wanted to open that up to, to if there is someone who could answer that question, just definitively, but I guess there's no one here. Oh, is, is Mr. Hurley here? Uh, Mr. Oh, Hurley's here, then but. Through uh, you, Mr. Moderator, would you mind just, at, I, I, I was a little convoluted, but the uh, question I, I, is, yeah. if this project fell through, this crossings at Fairfield, would we be changing anything in the proposal to, uh, to, to do this for the sewers? Thank you. Uh, I can answer that if the, uh, Moderator wants me to? Yes, Mr. Yes, Hurley. Hurley. Okay, thanks. Good evening, everyone. I'm Bill Hurley, engineering manager for the town of Fairfield. Um, I had just uh, talked to uh, Mark Barnhart uh, uh, at closing and Jim went, and they both have said that the, uh, the developer has started construction. They're pretty much doing site prep work right now, but they have all intents and purposes of doing that first housing unit. Uh, tomorrow, my understanding, um, talking to Jim Went, is that the developer will have a pre-application meeting with zoning to discuss other details, in, including the uh, uh, concourse and uh, other uh, proposals for the development. So it, it appears that they're still moving forward and there's no problem on that end. As far as uh, the sewer, uh, it, still, it still needs to be uh, done anyway. Uh, and um, it was just one of those things where the uh, East Trunk line, the one where we got the $3 million grant, that one is a little bit more dependent on the uh, development, uh, but uh, that one, uh, we'll, we won't really be starting that one for probably three to six months from now, uh, but, we, um, but this one here uh, with the approval, we will, um, we will uh, start the uh, bidding process uh, to go out to contract bid. I hope that answers. That's the best I can answer for right now. I, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Yes, you did. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Gill. Any other comments from the body? Questions? Thank you. Just want to make sure. Okay. Um, any public comment? No. 
Nobody here, nobody online. Okay, all those in favor of items five and six, six and seven. Opposed? Abstentions? Good. Motion carries unanimously. Item number eight is to here consider and act upon the following resolution as recommended by the Board of Selectmen. Resolve that in accordance with request from the town attorney, certain amendments be and hereby are made to the following cell tower lease. Dish Wireless LLC, 100 Reef Road. Do I have a motion to approve? Representative Siebert, seconded by Representative Miguel Denzi. Any questions on this item? Comments? Representative Gill. Hi, sorry to be taking up your time. Hannah Gale again, District 6. So the reason why I am going to vote no on this is because, um, number one, this is a cell tower in, at the center of our town in a very dense urban area. And there are already just so many different pieces of equipment on that cell tower. It's right by our police force that also has to deal with so many different um, communication apparatus. There's never, you know, it, it, I mean, and I'm not gonna go into the whole issue of, of health questions, but moving forward, if there is so much redundancy of equipment on these cell towers, there has got to be some sort of a movement towards asking these providers to not each individually put up their own equipment on these cell towers. I mean, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna undertake the possible, you know, the the ish, the possibilities of the health effects, but no one is looking at it, and so I'm I'm gonna vote no on this, knowing that it's not gonna have any, you know, effect on it. Everyone else is gonna vote for it, but I just simply want to raise the question to the town: Is it okay for us to have this cell tower in the center of town with so many different providers' apparatus in it? You know, could we, could we, in looking into the future, just begin to think about you know, some sort of accountability, some sort of health study, you know, even if it's epidemiological. Thank you very much. Thank you, Representative Gale. Representative Siebert. Joe Siebert, uh, District 5, RTM. Um, with all due respect, uh, Representative Gale, I understand your concern about that. Um, I will tell you that, not to get into too much gory detail as to why you're seeing this uh, extreme increase in growth in cell towers to support neutral host providers, but the reason for this is that with the advent of what's called 5G, some of you know what that is, right? Um, they operate at a spectrum level swath, at a very high spectrum level swath. The advantage of that is it provides more capacity and more coverage. The disadvantage, if you want to call it a disadvantage, is because the propagation of that signal at that high spectrum, band, uh, spectrum swath requires more cell towers to be built. And the reason why there should be no health concerns whatsoever is because the FCC, the American Cancer Society, and the FDA and Food Drug Administration has determined that the, pr that the propagation of that spectrum occurs at a horizontal level. And I'll read to you, when it comes, this is from the FCC, when it comes to cell phone towers, experts say that for people on the ground near the base of the cell tower, the energy comes from RF waves is not considered to be dangerous. RF waves from cell phone tower antenna, like those from other telecommunication antennas, are directed toward the horizon parallel to the ground with some downward scatter. Base station antennas use high power levels than other types of land mobile antennas, but much lower levels than those from radio and television broadcast stations. The amount of energy 
from RF waves decreases rapidly as the distance from the antenna increase. As a result, the level of, of exposure to RF waves at ground level is much lower than the level close to the antenna. And this was supported by all three organizations. So what I'm trying to say is you would have to be not only right at the cell tone tower, but your house has to be a tree house at the horizontal level of the cell tower. So um, I realize that you're seeing more and more cell towers because of the propagation requires to support that kind of technology to have more of them. But I see no, no health threat. Actually, you have more of a health threat if you had a cell phone on your head without hands-free, which most people don't do anyway, of getting cancer by having that cell phone on your ear. So I, I just, I just want to lay that out there to kind of alleviate your concern. But to your concern, you are going to continue to see more and more cell towers to support that type of spectrum that, is, that does not affect the consumer on the cell phone. Thank you, Representative Siebert. Any other comments or questions on this item? And we don't have any public, so uh, we'll take it to a vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Aye. Representative Gale and Pastilli, I believe that was. Sorry, I was in favor, Mr. Moderator. Okay, it was delayed. All right, so Representative Gale. I was the one with a good one, sorry. Thank you. Abstentions? None. Hmm. Motion carries. Okay, item number nine. We are not hearing the noise ordinance tonight. It's been sent back by the co-sponsors to LNA. So we'll move right to number 10 to form the RTM Special Committee on Energy Initiatives. Do I have a motion to approve? Representative Grazeffa, seconded by Representative Horton. Uh, comments on this item? Representative Astorita. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Ken Astorita, District 10. Uh, Thank you for picking up the mic and not hunching over like <laughs> It's out of necessity. My back won't allow that anymore. Um, I, I just wanted to make w w one comment and maybe a suggestion. I, I actually I, I agree with, um, you know, the goals. But my thought is, if you assigned it to say like the town sustainability committee, you could draw on the expertise from you know the 61,000 town residents rather than just people in this room. So that would you know that would simply be my suggestion. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Estorita. Representative Iacono. Uh, thank you, Mr. Moderator. Um, I'd like to propose an amendment um, that we strike the language and insert to ask the Sustainable Task Force to explore and include an updated ener energy initiatives and their long-term sustainability plan and communicate those to the public through community outreach. Okay, do I have a second? Representative Astorita. Any comments on that? Representative Garskoff. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Josh Garskoff, Josh Garskoff District 5, sorry. Um, I have a question, and I, I may have this wrong, but I think the Sustainability Committee is more about uh, being ecologically conscious with our town, and the Energy Committee is more about trying to find a way to save some money for our town. So those are different missions, if I'm not mistaken. Thank you. Representative Iacona. Um, 
Thank you, Pam Icona, District A. I did pull their charge today, I did read it. They have a whole chapter on energy efficiency and energy conservation, um, and included in that are things that include exploring things about energy, um, rebates and incentives, tax credits. Um, they have a whole section on um, conducting education and outreach on uh, energy opportunities and resources for residents and businesses. Um, leveraging federal and state uh, incentives and low interest financing so that so you know in in my view that they could take that up under this particular chapter um, uh, you know they cite things like clean energy action energize connecticut home energy database renewables uh, efficiency um, seeking out financing for business nonprofits housing so i i think it could dovetail nicely into that um, and that was that was my reasoning. Thank you, Representative Iacono. Representative Pastilli. Um, thank you, Mr. Moderator, Sharon Pastilli, District 3. Um, I wanted to uh, reiterate what Representative Garaskoff was um, indicating. The rebates that they're referring to, that's like for, for town, my understanding is that's for town residents to install green equipment on their in their own homes so um, for instance like in the past the state ran a program where if um, you know if if certain residents signed up for solar that um, there would be rebates and then also a potential benefit to the town so it doesn't have to do with aggregate energy prices it's it's really just related to um, green energy and, um, and, and conservation. Thank you, Representative Pastilli. Representative Kuhn. Representative Kuhn, District 7. Now I know where I got the three last time. Um, I think one of the big differences, or the big difference here, is that I want to use this as sort of a blunt instrument against the utilities and the regulators for the town, which the sustainable Fairfield people are more focused on individual folks doing their own little piece here and there. So this way, it, the goal is to get the town to be able to do something, maybe community energy aggregation, Maybe it's some way of tweaking existing laws that can allow us to penalize the utilities in some way and get a rebate in some way. And Representative Viancona, you raised last time the issue about taking over the utility in the town. Maybe it doesn't work, but I think it really would send a message to the utilities and to others if we had a resolution or something that said, we're going to explore taking over all of the utility assets in this town and running them ourselves. That's not what sustainable Fairfield is doing. Thank you, Representative Kuhn. Any other comments, questions from the body? Okay. Seeing none, so the amendment. Pam, do you have a copy of the amendment I can read or? Okay, so the uh, proposed amendment on the floor is to ask the Sustainable Task Force to explore and include updated energy initiatives in their long-term sustainability plan and communicate those to the public through community outreach. So do I have a motion to approve that amendment? I didn't mean I meant to. I'm calling for a vote, yes. Those in favor?
online. Webex. Those in favor? You can put it in the chat, put your hand up, turn your, there's a hand, that's Tallman, Story Tallman. Marty and Melissa, how are you voting? Aye. Yes. In favor, Rogero. I am not in favor. Melissa Longo. Marty is here, District 1 is not in favor. All those opposed? Aye. <laughs> Motion fails 1125, so we're back to the, uh, reg the original. Motion was to form the RTM Special Committee on Energy Initiatives, represented by Icona. Hi, thank you, Mr. Moderator. Um, I would like to pro propose another amendment um, to form the RTM Special Committee, Committee on Energy Initiatives, that, that the committee will consist of five members who will report their findings at the October RTM meeting. I have a second. Representative Astorita, any comments on this amendment from the body? Um, we had had a conversation at our LNA meeting, and, and uh, it surrounded um, having the five members serve on it. Um, if through the charter, the, they would have to have minority representation, so it could be no more than, in this particular instance, um, um, three. Three. If we went by the majority party, it would be three Democrats and two Republicans. Um, and then I think it's important to state in the motion when the report is do back and we discussed that at committee. So I'm just solidifying those things here. Thank you, Representative Iacono. Any other comments from the rest of the body? Okay, we'll take that to a vote. All those in favor of the amendment? Aye. Let's count the no's instead. Get your hands up. Go put your hand. The amendment, were you not paying attention? Representative Iacona is, is ba basically the amendment is for five people on the committee and the report in o the end of October, right before most of us will say sayonara. Okay, so. She brought it up last week. She's making it official tonight. So it's either yay or nay or abstain. So we're going with the no votes first. Arms up high. One, two, three, four. All right. Anybody on WebEx? Four no's, OK. All those in favor, aye. So that's how many we have here tonight? 33. Aye. aye. So 33, 33 to aye. 4. So the amendment passes. All right. Now let's vote on that amendment. Let me have that one.
For handwriting. Um, okay, uh, the amendment that we will be voting on now is the committee will consist of five members who will report their findings at the RTM October meeting. All those in favor? Aye. It's on the, on the it's on the amended that was approved. That's what we're voting on. Is everybody tired from last week? It's a, I mean, it's it's like it's not okay. Let's do it again. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. okay. Well, Aye. maybe we can Aye. go back to this one. All those. Uh, um. Yeah. Now we voted. Here. This is what we're voting on. Your amendment was approved. So now we're voting on this. On the committee. Cool, we're cool. All right, let's go back to the original motion, which is to form the RTM Special Committee on Energy Initiatives. All those in favor? As amended. Aye. Right. Opposed? <laughs> Three, four, five, six. He's going to go with the most. Three, four, five, two, three, four, five, six. So that passes 30, 31 to 6. What they're doing over there. It's a downside of not coming in person because this setup is not. The best. Okay. Item number 11 to consider and act upon any other matters presented to said meeting and which be, may be properly acted upon under the rules of the present uh, meeting. Seeing none, make a motion to adjourn. Representative Wolk, seconded by Representative Lambert. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you all. Have a great month. No, sorry. See you next week. Next week. See you next Tuesday.